Hey everybody, welcome to Live Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse, and today we're going to do some work with jQuery. Uh, it's been a while since we've done anything with jQuery, but I built a single page application 2016. I worked on it for on and off for the majority of 2016. I think I launched it in October, September, something like that. Yeah, it had to have been October. Uh, I think I launched it right around when my youngest daughter was born. So she was born at the beginning of October. Hey, everyone. I see uh, a lot of you in the live chat. So before we do that, I have a few things I want to talk about. I'm going to try to keep it quick, and then we can talk more about it later on when we do the question and answer session. So first thing is something cool. I found this in my basement and this is like my first phone the first phone I ever had so it's one of these old uh, Nokia phones with like the clear case that I thought was so awesome I mean it I still think it's awesome you see all the insides and the, the buttons are worn down you can't see the numbers on some of them so anyway, I'm going to add this to my antique collection, which you all can't see. So up here. So this is my antique collection up here. All right, I just have a bunch of like floppy disk, beta tapes, a copy of Windows XP. Uh, and I, you can't see it, but I have an old um, like CRT like television with a VCR in it. So... <laughs> So that's going to be added to the collection. And I'm going to see if I can find a cord that will charge that. And I'll get back on it. Maybe I can look at all my old text messages and see what I was saying when I was a teenager. Maybe I'll play some Snake. You all remember Snake? <laughs> um, all right. So that was, that was something fun. Uh, now something serious and then I want to talk about a project that I'm working on and see if anyone's interested in being involved so something serious I know I've talked on the stream before about mental health issues with myself uh, having depression so I just want to like fill you in on what I've been doing and I've been in a much better mood recently so as you may or may not know from previous streams, I am going to counseling every month. Uh, I'm on an two different antidepressants. So I'm, I'm doing, you know, basically medically what I should be doing. But then in addition to that, this is now the 10th day in a row that I've got up early before work and exercise. So nothing intense. I just go on an exercise bike while I play Zelda on my Nintendo Switch, <laughs> and um, I just go for like half hour, 45 minutes, um, just as long as I can before the kids wake up, and and then afterwards I may do some push-ups or sit-ups if I have time, and do a little stretching, and I'm, I'm not super tired during the day, I mean I stay caffeinated, right, so, uh, but I'm not really tired from waking up. Like this morning, I got up at 4:45 a.m. and I feel fine right now. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you all. Um, I know it's pretty common knowledge that exercise helps with your mood and with depression, but sometimes it just takes a little push to to get going. So this is kind of my little push to say, hey, I've been doing it now for 10 days. I feel a whole lot better. It was really really hard at first to get out of bed but now that I got into a rhythm I'm waking up early before my alarm the, the key also is getting to bed on time so I've been taking melatonin at night so that I can go to sleep early enough to make that possible I'm still not sleeping like a lot like seven hours or so like give or take a half hour um, but you know if I can get eight that's awesome too but Anyway, so that's, just, just thought I'd bring that up. I haven't really talked about mental health issues on the stream for a while. Uh, and I know, you know, some of you may be dealing with the same things. It's pretty common. Uh, so just, just want to talk about it. If anybody wants to talk more about that, either in the chat 
or privately, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I've been dealing with it for a long time, and sometimes it does help to be able to talk to somebody who's who's going through the same thing. Uh, all right, so last thing before we get started with the code. As you all know, if you've been watching the last few streams, I purchased the domain name javascript.af. And we have a forum running on there now that Harshit set up, which is awesome. Thank you, Harshit. Right now, it was down because we were trying to transfer it from Harshit's DigitalOcean account to mine. Uh, and took a snapshot, tried to transfer it, didn't work. So he just sent me another snapshot, and we're gonna try to get that up and running. So okay, I see this. How should I see the snapshot now? Thank you. I guess I'll just get that up and running after the stream. Uh, so we're gonna try to get that up. So if you're trying to get to the forum, don't worry. It's we're working on it. It should be up soon uh, after the stream, but. I had uh, so JavaScripter, so you can see Java. It's uh, in the live chat right now. J V S C R P or J V S C R P T dot R. So I'm just gonna say JavaScripter. Um, reached out to me on Instagram and had an idea for. A website where developers can connect with developers and it would be like like a social media platform but you'd log in with your github profile and it could you could voluntarily have it pull data from your github and mix that in um, so I, I kind of envision it and and JavaScript can let you know you know more details uh, as well in terms of like the UI and things and what's going on but the way I envision it is it's gonna be a place pretty much just for developers right you have to at least have a github account to get in so if if y'all remember Facebook when it first started um, around like 2004 somewhere around there you had to have a university email and at first like you had to have your university signed up to get an email not not every university was even allowed yet so it was like this niche and it was kind of cool you you had this thing in common so I'm trying to go for that vibe of you know this is a place just for a certain niche so it's it's not we're not trying to recreate Facebook here uh, or Twitter or anything like that they all serve their purpose and but what we're trying to do here is just have a place more geared to, to, toward developers so the features would be developers uh, for developers for instance like all the github info uh, I think it would be cool I had another suggestion from someone on Twitter and I'm, I'm really sorry I can't remember who it was right now but another suggestion was to feature really awesome JavaScript projects from the community so I think that's another thing that we could work in so that maybe when you go there it's not all about it's not just all about your feed like Facebook or Twitter is there's also like some highlights from the community of really cool things going on maybe some sort of like voting mechanism to be able to see what's what's going in there and and I would I would kinda wanna exclude like the really big projects like everybody knows reacts a big deal um, you know so we wouldn't want to feature that because I'm sure it would be on top all the time right when you go to look at like github's like top projects it's always a lot of the same really big ones so I would kinda wanna feature like some more unknown things that are really cool like people doing like VR with JavaScript machine learning like node bots cool stuff so um, anyway we don't need to have all the features ready right away of course right but the basic features that we'd like to have are you know, obviously this is going to be built with React because that's that's what we've been into, um, you know, most often. Uh, in terms of backend, I'm kind of thinking maybe Firebase would be a good fit for authentication and things like that. So, I don't know. Let me know what you all think. So, while you're watching the rest of the stream, before we get to the question and answer session, just 
think about this. Think if it's maybe something that you'd like to be involved in in some way. Um, or, you know, what are your ideas in terms of technology-wise? What would work best to have something like this where users sign in with their GitHub? Obviously, they're going to need to be data that's stored, images stored, these things. So if, if you're familiar with Firebase, let me know if I'm on the right track here and Firebase would be a good fit. Um, so I yeah I, I don't know so this is it's still very open in terms of like architecture like what's what we're gonna what we're gonna use uh, so I mean something like Firebase just comes with so many things built in to help us expand so that's why I'm kind of mentioning that but I haven't worked with it personally I've just kind of watched videos on it all right so anyway right now javascripter is working on ui stuff so basically just making kind of an interactive prototype with just straight html uh job like css stuff well eventually once we get that to where like we like it we can convert it to react components uh so that's that's where we're going now um javascripter has a repo for the ui up now so uh, I guess we could share info about that. Um, I'll maybe I'll get a repo going for like the React version of it, and so we could have like one official place. Uh, we could maybe do some have some issues ready if you want to help with it. So I um, I'm gonna kind of stop the conversation on it now, so we can get to the um, get to the code, but then we'll pick up with it. And, you know, so feel free to type whatever you think about this project. And please be honest. If you think it's a terrible idea, let me know. If you, if you have ideas for features or whatever, please let me know. And we can discuss it in the question and answer session. Uh, I'm probably not going to talk about it all the time on the stream for two reasons. One, uh, this is free code camp stream. We mainly deal with nonprofits. This could eventually end up being a for-profit thing. Um, if it's big, I could see maybe companies wanting to advertise jobs. I wouldn't want it to get crazy. Um, like a lot of the social media now, there's so many sponsored posts and things. I don't want it to be like that. But, you know, potentially there could be something like some something at some point. So I don't want to bring that into the Free Code Camp channel. Also, I am streaming from work, and I like to work on my work projects. So I don't want to spend a lot of my work time doing this. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask me. I'll take a minute or two in the live chat every day to talk if you have a question. Uh, otherwise, just you know, send me a message on any of the social media things or whatever, and, and we can kind of organize this and, and get this going. OK. Uh, also, JavaScript is in the live chat now, so if you want to keep the conversation going, um, just send a message, you know, just tag JavaScript in the live chat, okay? All right. So, let me introduce you to this old jQuery project that I, um, that I built. So, I, we've, we worked a little bit on a React version of this project. This is the, the bulletin, right? Uh, the university bulletin that we had worked on and I did some updates to it yesterday I added so we had that email authentication where you could do the passwordless uh, link sent to your email I've added another way to go into the app and we talked about this yesterday a bit where basically if you're able to log into the university single sign-on system and get to that password protected area and then you click the link from there you can get directly into the bulletin without having to go through the normal login process. But the problem now is before we automatically had a user's email because they had to put their email in to log in. And so I had a form on there that a user could fill out and I didn't have an email field because we just grabbed the email automatically. Now we need to add an email field in and we need to change up a little bit about how we're sending that data to make sure that the emails are going where they they need to go so let's dig into there let's let's kind of like try to straighten out my spaghetti code uh, jQuery this hopefully will be a good example of why you 
generally don't want to try to make a single page app and handle routing and everything with jQuery because it starts out small and then you add new features and all of a sudden there's a lot there. Uh, so let's start out and let's run this. So this is running on Gulp. Uh, so haven't used Gulp in a while. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember using Gulp or still use Gulp. I mean, if I'm not doing a React project, I'd probably go with Gulp or maybe just like NPM scripts or something. But so I think it's Gulp Watch. Let's see. Oops. Let me uh, bring my screen up here. There we are. Um, yeah, so I just did a gulp watch. And this brought up our, our bulletin. Now, <laughs> I'm going to have to log in. <laughs> so here's the, the normal login. And this is done with a service called Auth0. So I'm just using the free plan for Auth0. The university is not very big, so the free plan is sufficient. And I, I'm sending the emails for the authentication through SendGrid. So the free plan on Auth0 and SendGrid uh, are kind of what's behind this current system. Eventually, we'll get rid of this system when we switch over to the, the React version that uh, Harsh should set up a passwordless system without the use of Auth0, which is awesome. So let me check my email now and get the code. There we are. And let's see. Great. All right. So now I'm in. So what's happened is the user information is now saved in local storage in the browser. So as long as I don't clear local storage, then this will stay logged in for a year. At least that's the plan. Some users have been having issues where their local storage is getting cleared and there's no apparent reason why. So that was... Um, the other day, either yesterday or the day before, I think I had uh, someone come in for some troubleshooting, and that was exactly the issue. They were getting logged out, and we could not figure out why. All right, so let's go to the submit announcement form. So this is what we're going to be changing. We just need to add one more field, and that's for email. And we probably could... Now that I look at it, UI-wise, it might make more sense visually to move this file upload up here in this corner. So we would have email, the file upload, and then the announcement full width down here. Right? The announcement generally tends to be a, a lot longer. It wouldn't make sense to have a full width email except on, on uh, small screens. All right, so that's what we're... That's what we're going to do. So let's check the code. And let me let's duplicate this tab. And we're going to go into Visual Studio Code. I don't think I have this open anywhere. Maybe I did. Oh, well. OK. So this was our password. We don't need this. This is where I'm handling the login. Our app forms. There we are. So all the code is in forms.js. Now, unfortunately, this code is in a private repo. So you won't be able to, to follow along. I just saw in the live chat, Harshit said uh, has to go because something came up. Uh, thanks so much, Harshit, for, um, for all your help with the forum earlier. And uh, hopefully everything's all right. And uh, Nikki has to go too. See ya. Thanks for watching. Um, let's. 
I also should mention we had some more uh, pool requests come in, and we will go over that and, and review that um, probably tomorrow. I'd like to get back to our main project, that uh, Franciscan main website that we've been working on uh, tomorrow, and then continue to just work on that project until we launch it in February, late February. All right, so let's check out what we have. This controls the modal, and we have different modals that show up whether the message is successful or not. We're also going to need to go to the index page. So let me split this, this screen so we can have the HTML in one place, and I believe it's all the way at the bottom here. Here we are. Let me know if that font is too small. All right, so we can see we have this, this text area for announcement. What we want to do is make uh, an input. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this and copy it and we're gonna need yeah we need to rearrange this a bit but first wow that indentation is crazy um, there we are so we're get definitely gonna change this we don't want the the edit uh, icon so let's see I'm not sure if there's an icon called email but it's worth a shot uh, and we want to change this we obviously don't need a text area so let's change this to an input and we can give it a type of email uh, we want to change the ID to email and Materialize input. I think that class will be fine. And we want to change this to an input. And the label now is going to be for email. And we're going to change this to email. All right, so now we're pulling in email or we, we have a field for email and let's bring up this file uh, upload whoops and you know what I forgot to put this in its own <laughs> I messed this up a bit alright let's bring this down here and let's put it in a div we are using materialized CSS so that's where these column classes are coming from class it's so weird to not type class name since we're used to doing react but we can use class and let's call let's make this a column and we want it to be in small screens we want to make it full width so 12 out of 12 columns and then on medium screens and up we want it to be half the width so 6 out of 12 columns and now we can paste in our new input and then we also want to bring in this file upload input so let's grab oops let me make sure I don't grab too much file class wrapper checkbox okay I believe we have everything and we're going to put this right here underneath and we're going to also need to change our column classes as well so we had the uh, column that was uh, oops did I put this in the wrong spot I think I did
Alright, yeah, let's move that. Okay. Now we're in the right spot. So we just need to add on, on medium screens, we want this to take up half the width. Alright, now let's check out how this looks and then we can go back to our our code. Oops. Let's move this around so we don't have to go too far. Alright, let's check this out. Alright, okay, not, not too bad. So we have our email and you know what, this is not aligned correctly. We'll have to check on this alignment while we're having an issue here. But other than the alignment issue, this looks fine. I do want to make sure we're setting a, a good breakpoint here. So let's see if at any point it looks too small. I think it's fine. I mean, it's getting a little narrow there, but uh, that's that's still reasonable. All right. All right, not bad. Let's see if we can figure out from the markup what this this issue is uh, with the spacing with these icons. And an easy fix if we can't figure it out would just be to remove the icons, which I'm okay with doing that. Basically, the reason being, this is a really low level update <laughs> that needs to happen. So, I, um, I, I'm not that worried about whether or not there's an icon there. Um, all right, so we have this row and everything is wrapped in one row. Okay, column class, column class, input field, column class, okay. So it's a column. You know what? Let's try to put. No, we do have this. Oops. What did we do? You know what? I added another column there. I did not even realize that I added an extra column. All right. So if anybody caught that and was really confused, that's why I added an extra column where I didn't really need one. All right, let's check this out now. Hopefully that corrected it. Yep, and that corrected it. Now, these are lined up properly. I'm not thrilled about how far up this is with the email, but I'm, I'm willing to live with it right now. Whoa, <laughs> I didn't even notice this. All right, I probably just forgot an ending div here somewhere. So let's check out our divs. Uh, that's not bad. Oops, there we are. I have too many divs. There we are. All right, that's acceptable. I'm honestly, this is not the best looking thing I've ever built, but right now. This needs to be done like today, like, like this morning it needs to be done. Uh, so I'm okay with it. Also the fact that we're going to replace this entire thing with something new sometime within the next six months. Like I, I'm all right with, with this. This is a feature used by, I don't know, maybe a dozen people on campus. So it just doesn't make sense to spend a whole lot of time nitpicking uh, the details of this UI. All right, so now let's make sure that that email gets in to our forms.js file. Uh, so let's see how, how we're getting this data. So we can move this over because we won't really need this, this markup for a little while. Let me see. I'm gonna check my time. In about five minutes, I'm gonna take a, a, a five minute break and I'm gonna to go to the live chat here and, and answer some questions. I don't wanna to get too far behind with the live chat. So if you're asking questions, you're wondering why I'm not reading your comments or questions, uh, I usually 
go back and forth between code and questions for a certain amount of time. So I do code for about 25 minutes, then I go back to the questions. Uh, and then at the end, I'll just do a big question answer session and get through everything. So if you can, just hold on and um, you know hang out in the live chat. I'll get your question. If you can't stick around, you can always catch the recording of this later on, and uh, I'll I'll answer your question, you know whether you're here or not, and and then it will be uh, recorded for you to to uh, check out whenever you have time. All right, so let's see. So a little bit about what's going on here. Maybe if you're not that familiar with jQuery, this looks weird. If you are familiar with jQuery, this is pretty standard. So we're just getting, uh, so we're binding the submit event of our form. So this is, the ID is the announcement submit form. And on click, we're going to do something. So we passed in the event, so we have access to that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is check the length of our hidden checkbox. So this is our security on the form, right? Um, so I don't even know if this still works anymore, but the idea at one point was like if a bot is trying to fill out your form, like a spam bot, then uh, they, they would check the hidden checkbox because they would see it in the markup, but a real person would never see it and check it. So, so if the hidden checkbox is checked, then you don't actually send the data. Right, so that's what we're, we're checking there. Um, so first thing, we're, if there's a request uh, going, we abort that request. And, oh man, I'm seeing lots of variables here instead of constants. Oh, wow. Um, so here's our form container, and we're just saving that to a variable. So from now on, dollar sign form is our form and we don't have to keep writing this selector anymore so we're gonna get the inputs from form so we're finding all the possible inputs in that form so we're getting any element that is an input a select a button or a text area and then we're initializing some variables here for name value an iterator and then a checkbox Uh, we're grabbing the form elements. Let's see if I input here, not input type checkbox. All right, so this is getting inputs, but we're excluding some things. We're excluding checkboxes. We don't want the hidden one. We're excluding the file type input, and we're also grabbing uploads. I'm like remembering this as I go along. So, <laughs> and remember. It was nearly two years ago that I wrote this, uh, so be kind as you look upon my spaghetti code. All right, so we're going to serialize the data and local storage. So here's what we need to change. Right now, we're checking local storage, the profile that we have saved after someone logs in for the email. We don't want to do that anymore we want to grab the email from that form data all right so let's see what the best way would be to change this we are form. Hmm. Oh, okay. I forgot. I'm sending this all to a Google Sheet. And then from there, from the Google Sheet, the email is being sent. Okay, so I don't actually have any code that handles emails. All right. Sometimes it helps to just look at your code, even if you wrote it. Um, all right. I got to take a break for just a second.
because it is super hot in my office. So I'm going to take off my sweater and then get back to it. Actually, has it been? All right, it's been five minutes. So I'm going to take off my sweater and then we're going to, I'm going to go to the live chat, answer some questions, read some comments, and then we'll come back and we'll grab that email uh, from our new email input. And that should be it. There's one other place in the bulletin where there's a typo. <laughs> so maybe we can find that and fix it. And then we can push all this uh, to production. And hope, hopefully it all works. All right, I'm going to scroll all the way to the top of the live chat. Sorry if I seem a little bit distracted. For some reason, like all these songs that I don't like keep playing on Spotify. It's just bothering me, <laughs> and I keep switching them. Maybe I should just switch uh, playlists. All right, there we are. Switch playlists should be a lot better. All right. Um, Rook or uh, Nikki says, old school app made in 2016. Sounds about right. Front end moves so quickly. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. There's a lot of you saying hi. I'm just I'm just gonna collectively say hi to everyone because there's a lot of people in here. Um, <laughs> Vernique, that's crazy. So old. Hey, Vernique, if you're still there, uh, I didn't see you at the beginning there, but thanks for watching. John Hansen says, hey all, what's jQuery? <laughs> He's just kidding. All right, so uh, Mari, Marius, uh, let me know if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but Marius says, uh, uh, when that Marius has uh, had depression too and g helped get out of it through exercise. Also says, I'm so glad you're doing better. Talking about it uh, is a good move too. Too much stigma around discussing depression. Um, yeah, I do want to say too, with depression, uh, I've fallen into the trap before of thinking like, hey, I'm cured of depression and like stopping my medication and just stopping doing all these things that help me. And then I would fall back into it and it would take me a long time to get back out of it and you know get back to you know doing the things that helped me out so i'm going to try my best not to fall into that again and i'm going to continue with my counseling my medication my exercise to be honest with you the counseling and the medication are way easier than the exercise for me like taking a pill not a big deal going to go talk to somebody for you know an hour a month not really a big deal uh, my counselor's great i always feel like a million bucks after i leave uh, counseling so the exercise will be the hardest but I just want to let you all know that that um, for me at least depression has never been a thing that I could just like say wow I'm cured it's gone it always comes back um, sometimes it takes longer than others but you know if you're in that place you know don't don't feel bad about it. I think that's just kind of the nature of, of some types of depression um, Med asks, why did you get depressed in the first place? I don't really know, you know, why. It, it was, it's not like uh, an event happened, really, that made me really depressed. It's more like, well, as far as my doctors say, it's more like a chemical imbalance. Like, there's, you know, serotonin and different things in your brain that regulate your mood. And my brain is not producing enough of that. And certain things can help you get more, like exercise or medications. Uh, so that's that's where I'm at right now just trying to get back to like normal levels of you know wh whatever chemicals in my brain I'm supposed to have there all right hey I have uh, some of you uh, are, are typing in Russian normally I would put that in Google Translate but I'm gonna go ahead because we just we have so many comments now uh, that I'm not gonna do it right now Maybe I'll do it later on, though. So, apologies for that. Let's see. Let's 
All right, it looks like uh, a lot of you thought that it was a really good idea um, to have th this whole uh, website that we're thinking of doing with JavaScript.af, kind of the a place for developers to showcase their work and encourage each other. Uh, Jordan asks for links to tutorial videos. Jordan, let me know what tutorial videos you're talking about because I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I missed something in the chat or maybe I missed something. I I'm not sure what I was talking about there. So let me know. If you mean any of the tutorial videos that I've done on my channel, which I don't have that many videos yet, but the link should be in the description to this, uh, to this video. Oh, Harshit, I know you're not here anymore, Harshit, but Harshit said might kill the forum uh, thing. It, it's getting useless. I'm, I don't, I wouldn't kill the forum right away. Uh, I think it's a good thing, and I think I would rather not kill it, but maybe move it to a subdomain. It, I don't know. You all let me know what, what you think, but I thought the forum was really cool, uh, cool idea. All right, so it's been about five minutes. I'm going to go back to the code and try to finish this up. I'll come back to where I left off in the live chat uh, after we finish this. Oh, I see Sebastian's in the stream, and I haven't seen Sebastian for a long time. So, hey, Sebastian, how's it going? Welcome back. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see you. All right. So let's see. And I... I just realized I haven't been using the Pomodoro timer, so let me bring this over. This is the one that, uh, I think this is the one Harsha built, yeah. Uh, so let's set this timer, that way I don't have to keep watching the clock. And let's grab, let's see how we can grab our email. So we're bringing this data in, we're grabbing these inputs, and we're finding, let's find inputs. Right. Um, I'm not sure what format we have this in. Uh, so I want to see. I'm going to do a console log. And I want to see what these form elements are. And let's check it out. Let's put something in here. Autofill some stuff and submit. I'm going to inspect it, see what we get. DevTools popped up on my other screen. And is this what we got? Announcement text, email. Franciscan. Let's make sure I don't have any more console logs in here. Possible of console logging several things. What? One of 19? I seriously have 19 console logs? Whoa. Alright, let's get rid of a lot of these console logs. What was I thinking? 19 console logs. Alright, I'm okay with, with console logging this stuff for now. Uh, all right, I have some. Wow, I have a lot of stuff that's just commented out. It's always crazy to go back and look at my old code and just say, what was I thinking? All right, so let's go. Um, what do I want to do? I want to make sure I know which console log this is. So uh, this is some ES6 template literal syntax. So I use those back ticks, and then everything in here is a string unless I put it in uh, with within brackets starting with the dollar sign. And then this is JavaScript. 
So now I'll save that and I'm gonna bring this over here make it bigger so it's actually readable for you all let's clear this out and now I'll put my email back in and submit there we are so it says look at this object object okay cool so we have an object alright I was hoping that we would have an object wonderful All right, let's go over here. So what I should be able to do is just grab that value. Let's get rid of this. Form elements. So we are Let's take this out of here So we're just going to define email here So it's still available uh, in the scope that we need it but then within this function where we're serializing uh, then I'm gonna go here and say if name equals oops <laughs> I need uh, parentheses so if name equals uh, what would it be email then we're going to set email equal to value all right so now since we defined email here even though we're we're inside this this uh, loop here, we're gonna give email this value, and then now we don't have to change anything else because anywhere that we're using the email variable down here is just gonna pull this value. So could we possibly refactor and make it a little bit nicer? Um, probably. But as I said a few minutes ago, this, this particular update does not justify spending any more time than we absolutely have to. And we're going to replace all the code sometime within the next, I don't know, a few months or so. Okay, so now let's try it out. So I'm submitting it. It says it's been sent, <laughs> although the result says error. Email, invalid email. I should, let's clear it and then try it again. I, I'm not sure if that was from this time or the last time. All right, so it, <laughs> I'm getting an error and a success. Well, the only way to be sure is to check my email. So I do have my email open on my other screen. And let's see where I should be getting an email at my Gmail account and another email at my work account. Okay. All right. So we, we have an issue. So right now it's coming through. The message is coming through as test, but the email is coming through as undefined. So let's see what value we're actually getting here. Now, there's two ways that we could troubleshoot this, right? There's multiple ways. So we could go in DevTools and check out the value of this, or we could console log. Console log would probably be faster at this point, but I would like to show you another way that we could uh, we could get this. So. 
I don't usually do it this way, uh, but it is it it can be really useful. So let's check out our sources, and wow, so many things. Where am I at? Last pass. Why do I have so many sources? No, these are all my. Um, there we are. <laughs> all right, so let's go to our forms and let's check out email. So let's put in uh, a break right there. So let's redo this. And now we're going to go to submit announcement and we'll put the email in we'll submit and we have a breakpoint now right so I've added the breakpoint so the code stops right here and I can check it says all right the email name equals mouse picks email email defined series for me it's email just here. Undefined analysis. Hmm. All right, so this looks kind of weird. Uh, our serialized form elements end up being. email equals jessyweigel at gmail.com and undefined equals and announcement text. So we're doing something wrong. Let's figure out what we're doing wrong here. Name, value, and where are we getting that undefined from? Uh, you know what? I believe we're adding. We do need to do some stuff down here, I think. Yeah, we do. All right, let's go back to the code. I was a little bit. Let's see. Can I, did you not see it? All right, uh, King Dara sees one of uh, sees my mistake. <laughs> good look, good look at that. Um, good catch. Oops. Equals. Uh, all right. Thank you for catching that. You all are great on that. You always catch it before me. So yeah, I was using a comparison instead of uh, assignment. Right, so I was using the three equal signs instead of one. So that's uh, that's good. But then I also remembered that with the serialized data, why? Why am I serializing the form elements and then making the serialized data? Am I even using the serialized form elements anymore? I want to see what I'm doing with these. One, two, three. I'm not even using these. All right. I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone this definitely needs refactored there's stuff I'm not even using I'm gonna leave it alone but it should st it should work all right let's see um, I think that I pulled this code from another project where I did need this and I just left it in there and never took it out
Let's see. All right. Let me refresh. It should have refreshed. I don't know what. Oh, let me take this up and make sh let me make sure I saved it. There we are. Now let's give it another try. All right. Yay. All right, wonderful. I received the confirmation. So I received a notification at my work email that someone submitted a bulletin and then I received a notification at my personal email that my submission was received. Awesome. Very awesome. All right. Cool. Okay, so it works. So the um, let's let me check my timer. Whoops. Where's the timer? All right, so I have about 10 minutes left. At this point, I want to very quickly find the typo that I had, which um, a coworker of mine found it. So I'm going to go to my Slack messages and look at that again. Okay, great. on the bulletin help page. Okay, so it's on the help page. Which, I don't... The bulletin help, I don't even remember what the help page is. Is it... Oh, okay, it's a separate, it's a totally separate page. Okay. Let's see, hopefully I, I actually have it in here. But it will be. Let's close the dist. Index. You know, hmm. Help. All right, so I have a whole other folder that's for help. Let's look at the index and see what we can do. Um, all right, so it says experience is misspelled. E X P E R. I E N C E E X P E R I E N C E. All right, cool. Um, let's just wow, that's too much. Let me make sure I'm not using it anywhere else. E X P E R E N. All right, so that's not coming up at all. Good. All right, so that is ready. I do have a dist folder. Let me see. Just trying to think how I got this help. All right, so help is included in the dist. So I have this set up that I can just use go up dist to make this ready. But the last time I tried to run this, it didn't actually do what it needed to do to all the, the proper files. So I'm going to go into disk now and make sure that we have changes in the proper file. So it should be index and then that forms.js. And we also need to have index.html within help uh, change as well. So we're in the disk folder. It looks like help did not change. So we're going to just, I'm just going to manually pull this over for now. You could see like all the little places where things just did not get, um, it, it's just not good. There's just little manual things that need to be done. Uh, the build steps are just aren't good. Like compare that to something like using Create React app and having all that done for you. Uh, and, and it's consistent, it's reliable. It's just a huge difference. All right, not that you couldn't do that, in an app like this, but uh, it's not like it's not like I had an all-in-one like this is going to do everything I wanted to solution. All right, so that's there. We can close up this help and our index.html and our app. Great. Okay, so 
check our status just to double check. App, 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 this, this, this. Awesome. Now the next step is let's do a commit. Let's say add email field to submission sub, submission form. And we're going to push that up to GitHub. So again, I apologize. This is a private repo. So you can't see the changes. And then now I'm going to do fly production. So I'm using uh, an NPM module called flight plan, uh, which basically goes into your server and copies over your files into the right folder and it's really fast so that's it that should be working I'm gonna double check by going to the bullets in the live version and actually let me bring this up on my screen no uh, let's see alright so it's not working now but this will be a good test so this is the new login system, the new possible way to log in that I'm going to test right now. I tested it yesterday, but can't hurt to test it again. So now I've logged into our the university's single sign-on system that they call Access FUS. I click University Bulletin. We just saw a second ago I was not logged in. I click that, and now I have access to the bulletin. But there is no login info saved for me. But if I go to submit announcement, no, no, <laughs> did it not go there? Maybe there's some cat. There we go. It was just caching. All right, cool. So now I have the email files. Let's do a live test of this and submit. Submission has been sent. Let's check my email to verify. Yes, I just got verifications on Gmail and on uh, my work account. Wonderful. All right, cool. So everything worked out today. Maybe I'm better with jQuery than I am with React. Usually I break something with React. Oh, well. so hopefully I... <laughs> I, I was trying to do a couple of things with this stream, like other than just my normal, like, watch me at, at work you know type of thing and that was show an example of how I used to do things and kind of like hopefully see how far I've come and in really not that much time um, and also show an example of how things can just get really out of control uh, when you try to like hand code everything and not use something like react or angular or you know or view to structure your app it's possible I met all the user requirements with this. It works, it's reliable, but it's it's kind of hard to maintain. There's not really that much of a logic to it until I go back in and just look at what I've done. So anyway, I hopefully that was like somewhat evident uh, to you all. Hopefully I don't have to go back in and mess with this very for very much longer and we get that React version going. So, with the time we have left, which is only three minutes, so I'm not going to do any more code. Now I'm going to go back to the live chat, and I'm going to answer all your questions, read out comments, and uh, so anything that you want to talk about, put it in the live chat. Uh, let's scroll up. Okay. Um, Zuber says, no Firebase, please. Instead, use Postgres. All right, so Zuber, if you're still there, let me know why uh, you don't think Firebase would be a good fit for this. Uh, Anhale says MongoDB. We can definitely look into to using Mongo for sure. Oh, okay. Harshit made that's right. Okay, so I don't I don't know if Harshit's still here or not, but Harshit did make that chat app with Firebase. So I'm not sure if he shared that with everyone in the live chat, but I um, I remember logging into that before. So 
That's awesome. So since Harshit is already familiar with Firebase, that might be a good way to go, you know, just to save the time of having to learn something else. Anoop says, Harshit, you're pumped up. Yeah, Harshit always has a lot of enthusiasm. I, I really love that about uh, Harshit. And he has the skills to back it up, too. Let's see. Uh, Niki says, uh, Firebase is pretty easy to use, but apparently gets expensive when your site gets popular. All right, I can see that. But I wonder... Is it more expensive, if your site got really popular, is it more expensive to use Firebase? Or would it be more expensive to try to do the same thing by scaling, like manually scaling up servers and handling all that? Uh, so ideally, if our site did get popular, we would either get some funding from investors or um, donations or, let's say, advertising or, you know, probably like job listing types types of things. I think a job listing would be the most useful kind of advertising for developers uh, because developers probably are looking for a job or at least would like to see what's out there. Uh, if we start, if we did, would do advertisements for products, I mean, it could possibly be useful, but I could see that becoming a little bit, I don't know, kind of more annoying. That's just me. I, let me know what you all think. Uh, Angel asked if there was a repo of the project that I was talking about. And this is that JavaScript.af uh, project that we were talking about at the beginning. I haven't made a repo yet. Uh, JavaScript there made a repo that's just going to be like a static HTML site just to kind of get the layout uh, done, which I think is a great idea uh, because... It, at least for me, a lot of times a static HTML site is just so much easier to to do things in, to make like UI changes. You don't really need to add all that other stuff that comes with building out React. You don't need it, you know, at that point. Once we're you know pretty satisfied with the UI, then we can always start making that UI in React. Kind of like how we did for Catechetical Institute, but we're going to do a better job of it. Uh, guitar says MLab is free. Check it out. I think we've worked with MLab in the in the past. Uh, Angel says MongoDB Atlas has a free version. Cool. Thank you for all the the suggestions here. I I really appreciate this. Einbishin says, do you code on the weekends? Uh, sometimes. It, it depends. Uh, I really, I try to save the weekends for hanging out with my family. But when I was doing the Udacity React Nano degree, I, I coded on the weekends. When I have a client on the side, I code on the weekends. Uh, so it just depends on what's going on. Right now, my wife is doing, she she's doing two um like boot camp programs at once. So she's doing a Udacity Nano degree and she was doing the Flatiron boot camp at the same time. So the weekends, like she needed all the time on the weekend to do that. She just graduated from Flatiron's boot camp. Um, so maybe she won't need as much time. We'll see. So right now I'm doing very little coding on the weekends. But that sometimes I do a lot. It just depends. Um, Zuber asked if JavaScriptor and Harshit username used by the same person. Oh, no, no. It's two, uh, JavaScriptor and Harshit are two different people. <laughs> Michael said, just got here, and I think I really missed the most important part of the chat. All right, Michael, if you're still there, um, I guess just go back and watch the recording. I don't... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh. 
going to need a drink after that. And I can't get rid of my cough. It's not nearly as bad as it was the uh, last week, but it's like still there. Um, let's see. I lost my place here. <laughs> Steven asks if uh, if we're gonna cry when we see this, meaning my jQuery mess. <laughs> Alexi says jQuery is still used to as go. Yeah, yeah, I know it's definitely still um, still used. Steven says Jesse's confidence level is scaring me today. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean. Does it seem like I have a lot of confidence today or not a lot of confidence? Um, it feels like I'm a normal amount, but I don't know. And is that a good thing or a bad thing if I'm more or less confident? Uh, Zuber says, think about Parcel.js. Okay, I haven't heard about Parcel.js. Siraj uh, says, Parcel is the new build tools. Oh, okay. And Meyer says partial JS. I'm loving it. All right. Wow. I'm I'm totally like out of the loop here. I I had, didn't know it. I I don't remember partial JS at all. I'll definitely have to check that out. JavaScript just says if you want to talk more about the project, um, you can uh, DM me on Insta. Yeah, me as well. You know, there's a variety of ways to get in touch with me. So whatever way is most comfortable to you. You know, just let me know. Email, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, what is it, Instagram, any of the social media stuff I'm on. Just, you know, message me. All right, Michael Creel says, define spaghetti. Um... Yeah, so when I say spaghetti code, um, usually it's just like, to me, I don't know if there's an official definition, right? Like it's it's just kind of like a term that people use to describe code that's kind of like gotten out of control, out of order. It's it's not separated out logically. Um, so that what's, that's what tends to happen on some projects that where you either... And it doesn't, you don't have to use jQuery for to turn out a spaghetti code. You could be using vanilla JavaScript. You custom make everything, like the routing and all that, which is great. And it could be really clean at first when it's small. But then you come back in later on, and sometimes you have to add a feature here or there. It doesn't scale well. You end up just adding on pieces of code. Sometimes you don't remove old pieces because you need it for this one thing. And then later on, you may not need it anymore, but you don't remember that you just don't need it. So like I went back in and found a variable uh, that I, I wasn't using at all. So evidently when I was working through that, I left it in there for a reason and then forgot to take it out. So that's kind of what I mean by spaghetti code. It's all jumbled up like spaghetti and it's, it's hard to take it apart, right? It's, it's hard to just take like one strand of spaghetti and separate it all you know with a fork you can't just stick your fork in and do that it's hard so in the same way it's hard to just separate out parts of your code like you could in react right like in react you have your component if you do it right you know you could remove that component and pop it in another project and with minimal changes or sometimes no changes it could work hopefully that makes sense let me know if it doesn't or let me know if I'm wrong about spaghetti code and it means something totally different than I think it means. Let's see. 
Uh, Gander7 says, I watched from work and couldn't pay attention because of a work discussion when you were pitching an app idea at the beginning. Could you recap if you figure out what I'm asking? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, Gander7, I mean, the best recap is going to be just to watch the... Um, uh, the replay, but just a very short recap is it's going to be a website where developers can have a profile on there where it'll just you'll sign in with GitHub. It can pull data from about your repos and things, and you can share projects you're working on and talk with other developers. And it could be a place to you know highlight your work. I'm kind of hoping that it would end up being a place where um, the focus is mainly on projects especially maybe smaller more obscure projects that are really cool that people are working on to kind of bring it to the community and um you know get some more exposure for that and also a place where i mean let's face it like a lot of the other social media places there are all this other stuff aside from coding right so it would be nice to have a place to go where the focus is mainly just, you know, coding and developer related stuff and, and not necessarily, you know, other stuff that's going on in the world. There's, it's important to talk about other things, but sometimes uh, you don't want all that other distraction around. So I, this will like be purposely um, focused on one group, um, just developers and only on topics that relate to to developers. Uh, Anhil says we can open an issue with the subject about this project or uh, JavaScript, or you can write the description of the project in the README, uh, the repo. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. Thanks for that, Anhil. We should definitely just explain everything uh, and have it there for everyone to see. Uh, Olsas says, why is jQuery so bad? Where is where it's best use and where you don't have to use it? Uh, all right, so yeah, I guess I don't want to give the impression that jQuery is terrible to use because uh, I think I, some people, it seems like they believe that, but I really don't believe that. I think jQuery has its place. I will say this, if you're working with React, you should probably not use jQuery because any DOM manipulation with jQuery is going to circumvent React's you know, component lifecycle. So you're not going to get that, you're not going to trigger a re-render um, with, within React. You really should do everything like that within state. So try to avoid it with React. But if you had a project uh, that was not React based and you wanted to add some jQuery stuff, it can be a very helpful library. It can help you do more in less time than if you tried to do it all with just vanilla JavaScript. jQuery can be very helpful, especially for beginners who are just trying to get started and get a feel for doing things. I mean, yes, I think we can all agree that learning to do things the vanilla JavaScript way in the long run is very good for a developer, but sometimes newer developers need to have some successes and need to be able to build cool things early on to keep their spirits up and to make it through. Because, you know, we all know there's ups and downs. You, you got to have something to look back on to say, wow, I did that. Uh, to get you through those downs. I think jQuery, you can very, very quickly be able to make some cool things. Also, you know, people talk a lot about how it's bad that jQuery is this big library you bring in and sometimes you only use a tiny piece of that library. Well, the fact is that most sites on the internet use jQuery. So the odds that somebody already has that, you know, cache somewhere, especially if you use a CDN, are pretty good so the the cost of that size of you know jQuery is really mitigated by that so all in all I I'm not if you use jQuery I'm not at all trying to say you're a bad developer or anything obviously I've used a lot of jQuery on projects I even use jQuery on a project within the last year that we completed so I will say this in terms of just don't use it if you don't have to if you only need to use a little bit of jQuery it might be worth it to look up how to do it with vanilla JavaScript 
Um, yeah, so that's my take on it. Uh, if, if you disagree, please let me know um, in the live chat. Or if you agree but have something to add to that, please let me know. Um, started to create. Then it says hello from Russia. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Nayab <clears throat> said, is that visual code on Linux? Um, Angel says, uh, Said, yes, I use it on Ubuntu. Yes, it is available on, on Linux, yeah. Uh, Dennis wants to see my plugins for Visual Studio Code. Um, sure. Let's view extensions. All right, here's what I have. Let me get rid of these. It's not going to let me. All right, so... Here's what I have now. Most of these extensions can be added if you just get the React Food Truck extension. React Food Truck will automatically add a bunch of these in. But if you do that, I highly recommend that you disable import cost because it uses a lot of resources on your machine and it caused me to drop a lot of frames in my streams. Harsh had said it. it either crashed or almost crashed his computer so um, yeah so just be aware of that uh, if you end up getting react food truck so I'll, um, I guess I'll just scroll slowly through this and then if you want if you need to pause on one of them just you know you can pause the video or go back and watch the recording Uh, JavaScript says, I hate depression. I suffer from it as well as anxiety. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The anxiety, uh, occasionally I have trouble with anxiety, but I've been, it's been good. I used to have panic attacks, but it's been years since I had a panic attack. And uh, I really like, I'm, I'm a lot better with that now. Uh, John Hansen says uh, about jQuery that jQuery is not bad, though it does not run natively inside a browser. Therefore, a library needs to be running inside the browser in order for it to call the JavaScript uh, so there's data overhead. That is, that's well said. Uh, so I, I definitely agree with that. Zach says I went through it too. Oh, Peter says Visual Studio Code is um, also available on uh, Debian and Red Hat. Patrick says, uh, Patrick O'Donnell says, hey, walking 20 minutes a day is all the exercise you probably need and it will work wonders. Good luck. Cool. Yeah, actually, I've, I've heard that my wife was telling me that she read that I don't actually need to exercise for that long to get the, the mental benefits. So... I'm going to keep that in mind, but so I made a rule for myself that if I'm exercising on the exercise bike, I get to play um, the Nintendo Switch. So it's incentive for me to play, otherwise my kids always want to play and it's like, I, I just don't get to. Uh, so I kind of want to keep exercising for 45 minutes because you can't get that much done in 20 minutes, right? <laughs> But anyway, I'll keep that in mind because sometimes if I didn't get my full 45 minutes in, I would feel bad about it, which is I didn't want to feel bad. I'm exercising so I could feel better. So I'll keep in mind that I really don't need that 45 minutes, and that's just extra. And I think you know that that'll mentally that'll be better for me. Uh, Dennis said I can translate from Russian if you need. Oh, cool, cool. Thank you. Uh, Blake says, why the dot AF? <laughs> TLD. Um, <laughs> all right, I can see. Okay, Michael Creel explained that. All right, thanks. Thanks, Michael. 
Um, yeah, I just got the domain name as kind of like a joke because I thought it would be like, it'd just be cool to have. I wasn't sure what I would do with it. So that's why I, I got it. I just, it like, I realized that dot .af names were a thing and you could actually get it. It's the Afghanistan like code. So uh, I immediately just started typing things in to see if they were available. And JavaScript was one of the first ones I typed in. It was available, so I got it. Uh, JavaScripter says, I'm getting a lot of good feedback uh, from it. Awesome. Uh, Nyab says, yep, I found uh, Flatpak for Visual Studio Code. Cool, I'm not sure. I don't know what Flatpak does. Let me know. Uh, Sebastian says, quick um, TL, uh, TLDR, so too long didn't read on the JavaScript thing. I uh, have been, haven't been seeing the stream in a while. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, hopefully you've, you're still on and you've heard me explain it a couple times. So let me know if you need some more explanation, though. But I think we've, we've gone over it a couple times now. Sebastian says, hey, I've been working hard. I have this week off, so I'm catching around. Awesome. Well, enjoy your week off. I'm glad you decided to spend some of it uh, here with us. Oh, Alexi said the chat has been uh, buggy. Is anyone else having a problem with the chat? It seemed okay for me, but I wasn't really in it a lot. I was, I was um, on my other screen. Sebastian says, get a .tk one. It's free and more popular. What's a .tk one? Am I missing the the um, joke with a uh, .tk domain? Alexi says, .af domains are expensive. Where can I get that domain cheap? I don't really know. It was kind of expensive. Um, it's more than I've ever paid for a domain. So <laughs> it was like an impulse buy. I was like, oh, this, I just have to do it. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you can get it cheaper. I didn't find it anywhere cheaper. Michael says, between yesterday's uh, group chat and now today's look at your spaghetti, I'm feeling better about the code block I'm experiencing. All right. Well, I'm glad. I mean, I, I always say this. If I want you all to see when I mess things up, because I think it is important to see other developers messing things up, trying to work through it, especially messing up just simple things. Like I messed up and put three equal signs instead of one equal sign. Right, like, especially for developers who work alone or freelance or something, like, it's easy to get the idea from social media, from other YouTube videos, that there's all these developers out there that are awesome and that don't make as many mistakes as you do. Uh, but that's not the case. At least I think it's not the case because I make a lot of mistakes. So, so. Uh, I just kind of wanted to share that, right? Because we, we don't naturally want to show our mistakes, right? We, we want to post a selfie online and we take 50 selfies and post the best one, right? We don't post normally all the worst ones, right? It's the same way with our code, right? We, we don't post our terrible code and we don't post to, you know, talk about how much, how the crazy, ridiculous, simple mistakes we made. So anyway, my point is that I'm glad that it's working out that way for you, Michael. Oh, Michael said, by the way, the colon in the days remaining div is making my OCD kick in super hard. Days remaining. I don't know where that div is. All right, let me get rid of these extensions. 
I kind of want to see this this out of here. Um, let's see. I don't even know where I have days remaining on here. Oh well. Um, let's see. I lost my place. Sorry. Sometimes the chat just scrolls down all the way to the bottom. Um, <laughs> King Dara. <laughs> so King Dara kept pointing out my mistake with the equal signs. <laughs> said I was going crazy over here <laughs> I know sorry it took me so long to look over I just I always forget that you all probably see it before I do and I should have just looked over to tell you the truth I didn't realize that I had a mistake for a while though anyway so <laughs> David says Jesse you remember our venerable code opulent and imperial gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the page all right, that's a different one today, David. I'm wondering, so David, is that a quote from something? Because I don't, I don't really know what it's from. Um. Anyway, let me know. All right, so JavaScripters made an issue in the GitHub repo on, on JavaScripters GitHub account where we can all discuss the project. Max put a, uh, like a sleeping emoji so I don't know what I was doing at that time in the stream but it must have been boring sorry Max uh, King Daro says the reason I'm not a fan of Firebase is because it feels dirty to put all of the backend data management logic in the client uh, does that matter maybe I'm using it wrong I don't, I don't really know, King Dora. Like I, like I said, the only thing I've seen about Firebase is from YouTube videos. I haven't actually used it yet. I'm going to have to talk to some people that have used it. I know Harshit has. Maybe I'll have to talk more with Harshit. And um, maybe I'll just try to you know reach out to people, see if, if someone can fill me in on the pros and cons of using it. Uh, King Daro says, and I know Firebase functions are a thing, but I haven't heard much about them. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything about them either. Jordan says, go serverless with AWS. Hey, I'm like I'm open for any suggestions on this right now. I just threw out Firebase kind of to kind of get things started, uh, get the discussion started. But uh, the way I look at different technologies is, you have your user stories, you know what you want to accomplish. Now find the technology that will accomplish that the best way the quickest way the cheapest way you know whatever you need it to do find what's going to get that done for you so i'm not tied to any one technology it would be nice to use something that i'm familiar with um there'd be less learning involved for me i'm not opposed to learning but i just know like i'm realistic with my time to know if you know i might not it might take a lot longer if i have to learn something new before i can help out on this project Michael Creel says, no ads, please, no ads. JavaScript just says, yeah, no ads, trust me. Um, Alexi said, ads aren't bad. Take a look at carbon ads. Yeah, I, I don't want to put ads on there. Like I said, the only thing that even remotely close to ads that I'd be okay with are uh, job postings because to me, like that's that's helpful to developers, right? 
When you go on Stack Overflow, you see the job postings on the side. That never annoys me. I'm, I, I think it's, I'd like to see like, oh, hey, what jobs are out there? What are they asking for? What are the titles? Even if I'm not looking for a job, it's still nice to stay up to date on that. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about. I, I really would like to stay away from ads if possible. I mean, but all like realistically, at some point, if it gets really big and the cost for servers and everything is really high, something's going to have to happen. It doesn't have to be ads, but something needs to happen so that that can be paid for. I am not independently wealthy. So either like Bitcoin has to get to a million dollars or I have to win the lottery or we got to find some other way to, to support it. Michael says, uh, the customers who would come to the site have ad blockers installed, so it would be a waste of time to set them up. It could be. I don't really mind ads. I, sometimes it's useful if they give me like targeted ads based on my interests. Sometimes I see it and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I did want that thing. Um, Alexi says, I guess it depends on the person. I uh, whitelist pages that I want to support. I also whitelist YouTubers I like to support. Oh, that's a good idea. I never thought about that, but um, I don't run an ad blocker on my, my regular browser. I do have it on one of my browsers, uh, but that, that is a really good idea about whitelisting to support the sites you do want. I like that. Uh, Mikhail says, hi, what are you building? Um, in this particular stream, I was building, I was doing some updates on a jQuery single page application that I had built two years ago. And I was just adding in uh, a new field to a form and uh, connecting that up with, uh, we were sending it to a Google Sheet and then that would be emailed from there. Oh, Michael Creel. Sorry, Michael. Uh, so. I thought Michael had asked me to define spaghetti codes, spaghetti code, but he actually said definitely spaghetti code. <laughs> Sorry I went through that whole explanation. Um, Michael also says, believe me, I know what spaghetti code is. I am a pasta master. <laughs> so sorry about that, Michael. Um, well, maybe somebody out there didn't know what it was, so hopefully that was useful to someone. Uh, Michael said, uh, Jesse, developers need their ups and downs to make the ups feel better. Um, me, you're preaching to the crowd, brother. Okay, so quote, quoting me, and then he says, me, you're preaching to the crowd, brother. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, it's just how it is. It's, I think, just the nature of it um, that you, you get, sometimes you feel amazing, you know, like you've built something really cool, you've solved the problem, and then other times it's just like, you, you question your the decisions you've made in life like, that brought you to the, this point. Uh, so I think as you get more experience as a developer, uh, the lows aren't quite so bad. Um, I've, and, and the highs are, you're more realistic about the highs, right? So I don't really get to the point anymore where I'm like, yes, I'm awesome, like I know everything. And I think that's a good thing uh, because I know enough now to know that I'll never know enough, right? It, it, there's always going to be more to learn. Uh, but I also know enough to know, like, all right, if I totally mess something up or I can't get it to work, like, that's okay. Um, it happens. I just need to, you know, keep working at it or, you know, ask for help or do something. So, but I think it's hardest on newer developers. You know, they don't have as much time uh, to be able to look back on and say, yeah, I remember that time when I couldn't get this to work. And I remember that time when I did this and that was awesome. Um, so I don't know, anything to help new developers kind of get past that to kind of keep them humble on when they're really up and uh, to keep their spirits up when they're really low, I think is, is a good thing. And that's, 
I, that's probably one of the most important things I think new developers need because there's a wealth of information to help them but like the emotional aspect of it uh, is, is not it's not as easy to find help with that especially if you're on your own um, David says I'm learning JavaScript now and still trying to see if I should continue or go to jQuery I think I'm almost at the end of my JavaScript learning um, David yeah I mean I you don't need to go to jQuery Right. It, if you know JavaScript well, you can do everything that jQuery can do in just plain vanilla JavaScript. Uh, there, jQuery can just make it. It will be shorter for you to write, even though like technically you're adding in a lot of extra code because you're you have the whole library in. But from your perspective, what you actually have to write could be less. It could be easier to reason about. So it just depends. Um, there's a lot of different things you can get into to learn, though, with, with JavaScript um, besides jQuery. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. There's so many. I mean, you could do back-end stuff in JavaScript with Node. You can do VR stuff with Node now. Um, you can do machine learning um, with JavaScript. I'm not saying JavaScript is the best way to use machine learning. I, people have strong opinions about that, but it is possible. You can even do Internet of Things stuff with JavaScript. So, um, there's a lot of different ways you could go. Uh, Olsau says, totally agree with you, Jesse, about jQuery. Good to practice and learn, and after that, try React. Cool. Let's see, David. David says, are there things in JavaScript that I simply won't need as a web developer? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's, I've been a web developer for, I don't even know, like let's just say like five years, give or take a little bit. And there are still parts of JavaScript that I, I've probably never even seen and certainly never used. So yeah, you definitely don't need everything as a web developer. Um, my method of learning has usually been, I learn what I need to for a project um, and I build on that. Sometimes if I have time, which is rare these days, you know, I could read a book about JavaScript and learn some things that I never knew and don't really need right now. But once you start to get busy with, with clients or something, like it's just really hard to just study JavaScript. So if you're in a position of a student, that's great and take advantage of that and learn a lot. But if you're actually trying to make money and have a family or, or have responsibilities to take up a lot of your time, learn what you have to learn to get the job done and try to do your best to piece it all together. Um, Ankit says, please, can anyone tell me which is a good place to learn web development other than free code camp? Um, code Academy is good. Uh, Udacity is good. I don't really do much on Udemy, but people say Udemy is good. Uh, Westboss has all these courses that everybody talks about and says how great they are. I haven't done one of uh, the Westboss courses, but... A lot of people that I, I know are good developers say that the courses are good, so maybe you want to check that out. David says that Kevin Powell, Dev Tips, and Brad uh, Husey uh, also have great videos on YouTube. That's true. Yeah, I, I have never watched anything. Well, I've watched Dev Tips, but not the other two. But I really do like Dev Tips. Some of the Dev Tips stuff is a little bit old, but I think it's still really useful. A lot of the stuff about CSS and just general design principles are really good. Um, and the guy who is it? Travis. Uh, Travis has a really like positive, uplifting personality. I always like that about the DevTip videos. 
Uh, Alexi says, um, has someone done freelancing in Upwork or some other platform? Uh, I'm in the urge for money. Um, I haven't done something like Upwork, but let's see. So I can't speak personally from it. But if you're going to do some sort of online platform, I definitely do one that uh, makes you take a test to get into and really like make sure that you get paid what you're worth. Some of them just let anybody in and then you end up getting outbid. And if you get a job, you have to get underpaid, like severely underpaid. So that would be my only advice in going with different work things. So I'm not familiar with Upwork in particular. So... I, I can't say anything specifically to that, but just in general, like freelancing platforms, that's that would be my advice. Uh, Lexi says, I would do websites for food. <laughs> uh... Stepan says, uh, what do you think about Vue? I have not used Vue. I don't have a personal opinion about Vue uh, based on experience, but there are developers that I think are great and that I respect that love Vue. So I, I have it generally a good opinion about Vue, but I just don't really know enough about it to, to give you more than that. If anybody else has worked with you before, please let us know in the live chat uh, what you think about it. Oh, Michael Creo says, on the site between the counters, you have a day's remaining display with 18. Oh, on the actual site? Yeah, this is, um, yeah, that's not me. I don't make that. I don't manage any of the content on this site, so I can't do anything about this. These are like pre-made in Photoshop or something. Uh, let's see. Uh, so CMD and code, so I'm guessing it's command and code. It says, do you think someone should learn vanilla JavaScript before jQuery or another library? Or do you think it helps to illustrate some fundamentally important concepts? Um, I, I have some mixed feelings about this. So, all right, here's how I feel. If you're having like a free online like learning tutorial for people to learn on their own, I think jQuery can be very useful early on, even before you get to other JavaScript stuff, to build up some of that confidence. If you're teaching JavaScript in a like a university, I would not go with jQuery first, unless the course was like, I don't know, like web development for non-computer science majors who just want to get into something, maybe I'd do it then. But if you're really trying to learn programming and you're trying to learn JavaScript in a university, I would go vanilla JavaScript. Otherwise, if it's just an online course, intro course, I would go jQuery. And like I said earlier, I think the key is uh, you want to help people who are new, who are most likely on their own and don't know other developers. You want to help them start to get that feeling of, I'm really building something cool. Like, to feel the magic of web development, right? I mean, like, you understand what I'm saying with the magic? Like, things working on the page, you click a button and things happen. Like, it, when you first do that, it, it feels great. Like, you're creating things. Uh, and and they're, they're cool. So going in first with jQuery allows you to do that. Uh, and then if they really want to stick with it, they're going to eventually get into vanilla JavaScript. Like it's, They're going to have to. right? So that's my take on it. I'm, I'm definitely open to hearing alternative opinions about that too. I mean, I'm, I'm no expert. Uh, but that's, that's generally how I feel about it. I started out... I don't know, probably with a blend of JavaScript and jQuery, I tried my best to to learn both. But realistically, when I had projects that needed to get done, I turned to jQuery most of the time because that was the easiest, quickest way for me to get things done. 
it wasn't until I really started getting serious with React that I forced myself to learn how to do more with vanilla JavaScript. So anyway, hopefully that was a decent answer to your question. Let me know if it if it wasn't or if you have any uh, follow-up questions. Uh, Patrick O'Donnell says, funny thing about spaghetti code, I once did an app like that, but it ran in production long after I left the company. No one could figure out how to replace it. <laughs> That's that's true. That's the other thing. I'm I'm always worried. Like I want to convert everything I'm doing to React and have like very standard things that we do, like uh, coding standard, like um, style standards, and and all that, so that you know if and when I leave, someone could come in and very reasonably like take over everything and figure it out. Uh, but when I have apps like what we just worked on today. I'm not confident that that could happen, but I this is really the last thing that I built that I need to convert over to kind of our newer, more organized way of doing things, uh, and then I will be at that point where everything is at least somewhat standardized. With the except that Catechetical Institute site, I still need to get some jQuery out of that site, but other than that, like I'm almost to that point, and especially with all these videos, there's a video record now of my thinking. <laughs> So someone could come in, and if they really wanted to and didn't know something, they could go right to the video where we did that and, and find out about it. So I don't want to leave people hanging if I do leave here. Um, I'm not, like, I don't, I don't have another job offer or anything right now, so I'm not saying I'm going to leave, but I just want to make it easier for the next person if it happens. Let's see. Hussein says, hey, dude, you have got a nose on your face. You're right. That's that's definitely true. I have one. It's right in the middle. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. So what are your thoughts on React versus Vue? I don't know. I, I answered a question about Vue earlier, so I'm just going to stick with that. I don't know enough about Vue to really give you a good answer on React versus Vue. I will say Vue seems cool, but I don't know that much about it, and I really do like React. I have fun developing in, in React. David said good advice. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that I could help you out a little. Uh, Ak... Academind is another cool front end channel. Okay, cool. So it's A C A D E M I N D. Awesome. Thank you for uh, for sharing that. Let's see. I'm trying to get the uh, Google Translate. So Artem, Artem uh, said Academind is another cool front end channel. So sorry I couldn't say it uh, right off the bat. It was in um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Cyrillic characters, so Russian, I guess. Um, so anyway, I did the Google Translate. Hopefully that's that's correct for your name. Let me know if it's not. I'd like to pronounce it correctly if possible. Um, Hussein says yes. I did an Upwork. It works. Only get hourly paid jobs with verified payers. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for adding that. Uh, personal experience is always, I think, one of the best uh, things to to be able to draw from when you you know when you're considering doing something like Upwork or even getting with a new company. Being able to talk to people who've been there or are there, it gives you a lot of, of good insight. Um, Anhil says. Jesse, can you mention the name of the freelancer page you have worked? I think it was freelancer. I think it's called freelancer.com. I did that. There was another one called Thumbtack. And freelancer.com, I probably made like $15 from total. I mean, it was it was crazy. You're doing work for like, I don't know, like doll, less than $10 an hour sometimes. It's just, it's it wasn't a good experience. 
it, you have to do so much work cheaply to build up your portfolio and get a lot of good reviews. It's, it's not worth it. Uh, Thumbtack was a little bit different. I think I, I got one client from Thumbtack and maybe made like, I don't know, $150 total after doing some stuff. It was really like, didn't make much from it. Uh, Michael says, I spent 15 years building casinos around the country and that was the biggest thing I built that. That's the feeling I want these days from coding. Wow, that's really cool. So you went everywhere and built casinos and stuff? That's that's cool. So were you like a construction worker, or architect or something? Like, You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I was just kind of curious. Uh, Joshua says, hello there. Watch some of your vids. Uh, like it uh, so much. I subbed right now. Awesome. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, David says, since backend JavaScript is possible with Node and the like, can we skip PHP in those? I, it's definitely possible to skip PHP in other backend languages. You can pretty much do anything that you need to do with just all JavaScript nowadays. So... I, I know a bit of PHP and a tiny bit of C Sharp and a tiny bit of some other languages, but I, I rarely use them. And yeah, so it just kind of depends on what you want to do. If there's a specific technology you'd like to work with that uses a different language, then you know learn it. But if you're not really sure, you know if there's no specific technology, like let's say if you really want to work with WordPress, you gotta learn PHP. If you don't have anything like that, I'd say just stick with JavaScript. Uh, you know, you get front end and back end for the price of learning one language. Like you can't beat that deal. Um, Joshua says, by the way, is it possible for you to make a C tutorial series or an Android app development tutorial? You know what? Um, we are going to do some stuff with React Native, so it won't be in C or Java or Kotlin or anything like that. It'll be in JavaScript, but you will be able to build uh, Android and iOS apps with it. So. We, we already kind of started a repo for that, and I haven't done that many videos with it, but I hope to after I'm finished with this current project uh, that we're going to be working on until probably like the end of February. And then hopefully we can switch over and do some more with React Native, which, which is what we'll do the Android and iOS stuff with. Let's see. Um, where am I at? Harsh says, I love React 2. I am good with front end stuff now. I need to get into back end. What frameworks would you suggest for a back end dev? Um, like Express. Everybody uses Express with Node. Uh, so, like, I, I mean, for these streams, we use a lot of React with Express and Node, uh, and we, we build a ton of stuff with that. Oh, Michael says a slot technician kept the machines running along uh, with keeping the accounting systems warm. Oh, okay, cool. Very cool. I have an uncle that used to be a dealer at um, at casinos. Uh, I, so I've never really worked at one before, to be honest with you. I actually have never uh, like gambled in a casino, so um, don't have a lot of like personal experience with it. But I do know. Um, I know a few people that have worked at them. There's a casino somewhat close to where I live. JavaScript just says, are you talking what I think you're talking about with React Native? Yeah, well, definitely. So I actually have several projects I want to do with React Native, but this uh, JavaScript.af for sure needs to be done with React Native, right? Like people are going to expect to have mobile apps uh, with this, this network. I think that's that's a given now. If you're going to do something like this, mobile is just expected. So, and since we're doing it with React, it won't be too much of a stretch to make it work on with React Native. Uh, there's definitely some some differences in the way you do CSS and things like that. Uh, the differences in the way you do routing, 
but the logic behind it and grabbing data and things for sure um, is going to be pretty much the same. Let's see. All right, Gander7 has to leave. Hey, thanks for watching and uh, th thanks for chatting with us. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you back here in some other streams uh, later on. All right, so I'm at the bottom of the live chat now. I have a few more messages coming in, but we'll probably be finishing this uh, in a few minutes here. And I've gotten <laughs> a lot of messages, so hopefully I didn't miss anything very important for work. Uh... I think I'm good. I'm like checking now. All right, I think I'm good. Um, so let me finish up these last few few messages here. Uh, Harsh says, "Okay, have you ever tried using Bluebird to cancel promises? Uh, if yes, can you make a series on that?" Uh, I have not used Bluebird, so sorry. I've never used Bluebird. I think I read a tutorial on it or something at some point, like a blog post, but that's that's all my experience. So I wouldn't be comfortable doing a tutorial on it. But if anybody knows of a good tutorial with Bluebird, you know, please put it in the live chat. Uh, so, so we'll at least have some resources that I can, I can give you there. Uh, Vivek says, networking is a good field. Yeah, for sure. I actually took uh, some of like the Cisco networking certifications because I was going to get into networking and then a lot of stuff happened. I ended up not getting into it, but um, I, I agree, yeah. Let's see. Um, Vivek says, is AI is good or networking for to get a job in the future? Yeah, I think AI is going to just be like crazy in terms of jobs uh, in the future. It's really cool. I talked to a developer on Instagram yesterday about it, and uh, she was saying like she wants to get into to machine learning AI stuff, and I'm like, I'm I'm going to be jealous of you when you do because that's that's really cool stuff. Um, let's see. Harsh says like CCNA. Yeah, exactly. I was doing the CCNA uh, certifications. It was like Cisco certified network associate or something like that. Um, yeah. So I went through like they let me break it down and I don't know how they do it now, but you took two tests. So like halfway through the course, you take one test. Halfway through, you take another test. You have to pass both of them. I passed the first test. And then by the time I got to the second test, I didn't really want to go into network anymore. So I did take the test, but I, I didn't pass it. Like, honestly, I didn't really study it all for it. Uh, so I, I wish I did. It was kind of a waste, all that time and money to do it. Um, so I wish I would have just spent, a, you know, a few hours at least studying and I could have passed it. But, oh, well, I like what I'm doing now. So I guess it worked out. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna wrap things up now. This was a great live chat, this is a lot of stuff, and uh, we covered a lot of different things, and we finished what we wanted to get finished in, in this uh, old school jQuery app. So hopefully I'll never have to work on this again. <laughs> and um, let's see, I have a few more things coming in. All right, so no no questions. Oh, okay, is there a schedule uh, for for these chats? I've been I'm trying to do the live chats at 12 p.m. Eastern time every weekday, Monday through Friday. Sometimes I have to change up the time depending on what's going on in my schedule. But if you subscribe to this channel, you should get notifications letting you know when the chat's going to happen. And if you follow me on Twitter, I usually tweet about it beforehand. I try to do at least an hour beforehand to give everyone a heads up about, you know, what I'm going to tweet or what I'm going to live stream about. So, all right. I had a really good time. Uh, I really appreciate all your, your advice uh, for me in the live chat, all your help and questions. Uh, so, I will be back. Let me think tomorrow. I'll, I should be back tomorrow. I, I have one meeting in the morning, and I think I'm free for the rest of the day. And so 
Uh, until then, have a great day.